For a long time, companies have talked about robust design and wanting that for their products and processes. However, it's maybe a little confusion on what does robust design mean. One way I would feel that it's understood out in the, in the, in the world is, by kind of lay people, is that this thing's just been tested. It's been beat up, it's been tested to death. We know it's going to be rugged, it's going to be reliable. Not that that's a bad definition, but if that's the only method uh, testing to death that an organization uses, uh, that may not be the most cost effective. And how have you done your combinations of things to understand that at high, say, high temperature and high uh, humidity, that also works. Um, but there is a ruggedness uh, concept that people see in that robust design idea. Um, what some organizations do, they'll test, know that, that their product works in a certain region, then they'll tighten things up so they have a guard band out here to ensure that the, the product, if it moves around, how it performs, is not going to slip outside an acceptable area. Where do they draw the guard band is a little bit, um, it's, I wouldn't quite say random, but it's not necessarily a, a rigorous method to do that. And is it really cost effective? How much will things move? You're kind of guessing on that to, to get a good area. Uh, Taguchi back, popularized at least back in the 70s, used an approach with a noise array. And what he was doing there was just trying to get a little bit more math and science behind understanding where you're robust and, and some methodologies to do that. Certainly brought some data and some science to it, uh, and, and certainly a big step improvement compared to testing to death or just putting an artificial guard van. Um, in my approach, using design experiments, which built on the Duchi, sorry, the Taguchi comments uh, concepts, is uh, using the interaction plots to understand that robustness, taking the, all the variables together, the things you can't control as a designer, and the things that are noise understanding those interactions and finding the less sensitive spots. That brings some robustness to it. You can certainly over-test it. You can understand your guard bands. Uh, you can also additionally, once you have those strong empirical modeled equations, uh, you can also uh, use a concept called propagation of error. And if you're familiar with the term, the basis behind it is uh, partial differential equations. And all you're really doing is just seeing how that propagation of error happens from input variables to your final response measurements, or your output measurements. And that's an incredible way to do robustness. Not every organization or project needs that on, on everything all the time. I've certainly used all the techniques I just told you, all the way from just beat it to death, um, applying the guard band, the Gucci noise array ideas, as well as the design experiments and propagation of error approaches. Uh, what you can do with that uh, from there uh, is amazing, the capabilities, but again you have to realize what your product needs, what your organization needs to spend money on, uh, and what those tools can do for it. If you would like assistance in creating a robust design, whether for your new product or for a manufacturing process that you are, have, uh, give us a call here at Perry Solutions. We'd love to help you out and find the right level of those robust design approaches that will be appropriate for you.